Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Surrounds Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about the stopping voltage and the photoelectric current and looking at the formula HF is equal to 5 plus VSE, where VS is the stopping potential, everyone, and E is the electron charge. Okay, so don't worry, that formula looks quite complicated, but I'll walk you through it how we do it. So before we start, obviously, hit, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Okay, so before we get going, let's have a quick recap on everything we've covered so far on the photoelectric topic. Right, so this is the basic principle over here. So here we've got a zinc plate. As you can see, we've got electrons which are within the metal zinc plate. They are attracted to the metal ions over here. So this is obviously going to be a metal ion. And what happens is ultraviolet light comes in and via the energy of a photon. And what happens is the energy of that photon, that UV photon that comes in, is being transferred into the electron and that electron is then liberated. This leads us to the following formula, which is going to be HF, which is the energy of the photon. Yes, HF is the energy of the photon, is equal to phi, which is the work function. Don't forget, the work function is the energy required to liberate the electron from its bound state. You must break that attraction first and the rest of the energy is kinetic. Hence why I've got the formula half MeV squared where Me is going to be the mass of the electron here. That's the reason why I've got M subscript E. It's the mass of the electron, which is 9.1 times by 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. H is going to be Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times by 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So that's going to be that value here. But in my previous video, I walk you through this entire thing, which takes about 20 minutes. Well, obviously, make sure you've watched that video before watching this one. So what exactly is the stopping potential? Let's discuss it. Okay, so let's consider this electrical circuit right now. So here we have an electrical circuit. Uh, as you can see, we've got a power supply here, I've got an ammeter here. Right, this inside here, it's basically a vacuum. So here, there's a vacuum um, inside it. So let's call this a, this is a vacuum. So there are no free particles uh, inside there. And on this side, we've got a terminal. This is a terminal here, so this is one terminal. And uh, the, there's an other terminal, opposite terminal over here. There's two terminals on each side terminal over here. Okay, so we've got two terminals. So this is one terminal, this is the opposite terminal here. Right, I'm just going to erase that for now. Uh, you'll see the reason why. Uh, let's do the following. So let's just say right now we have an ultraviolet source over here. So here's my UV source. And don't forget, this is a metal plate as well. Right, from here, everyone, we're going to shine the UV light. The UV light is going to travel, everyone. It's going to hit uh, this terminal here. The terminal is made out of metal. So what will happen is this. Just like the photoelectric effect from earlier on, in which when the UV light hits the metal, electrons pop off, the exact same thing is going to happen here. The UV light, those photons will come in and it will liberate electrons from that metal plate. The electrons will obviously be emitted, so that's why I've got an arrow and the electron is popped out. Right, now the next thing is this. Because we've now combined it with an electrical circuit, we can see that hang on, there's a cell here. Well, what's going to happen? What will that cell do? If this terminal is positive, everyone, and this terminal is negative, what will happen to this terminal over here, this one? Well, in order to identify what's going to happen, let's just imagine you're an electron on this terminal, you're on this wire, you want an electron hanging out on this wire. And you're a couple of electrons, let's draw a couple of electrons on this side of the wire here. If you make this terminal positive, all the electrons from here will move away and we'll move on to this side over here. So what happens is the top terminal becomes positively charged. Okay, yeah? So don't forget, if this is positive, all the electrons on that wire are dragged onto here, making that positively charged. And by symmetry, imagine there are electrons which are hanging out over here on this side of the wire. If you make this terminal negative, because it's negative, negative, they'll be repelled and they will add on top of here. So this one becomes negatively charged here. So this terminal is positive, this terminal is negative, and the UV light comes in, liberates the electron, the electron will be able to what? Obviously, it will cross the gap. So the electron emitted will obviously cross the gap because they are oppositely charged. The electron which is released will be attracted to this side over here. So the electron will be able to move across. The electron which has been released moves across here. Excellent. Right, so as the UV photons come in, they will liberate electrons which will move across the gap. And as they move across the gap, now we have charge flowing. We will have charge flowing here. 
So the charge which is flowing obviously will cause a current to be registered. So the current will be greater than zero over here. The current will be greater than zero now. Right, so hopefully you can identify that the electrons are moving and they obviously contain charge. As the electrons are moving around, there's, there's now a rate of flow of charge. Therefore, there's a current. We are going to call this current the photoelectric current. So this is the photoelectric current, everyone. This is the photoelectric current because it's going round and round and round and round here. And obviously it's due to the photoelectric effects. So that's why it's called the photoelectric current. Easy stuff. Right. So from here, we haven't even talked about the stopping potential yet. But now we can now discuss the stopping potential. OK, so um, you may have noticed that I've interchanged the words voltage and potential, but they're both the same thing. The stopping voltage is the stopping potential. So what on earth is the stopping potential? From here, we're going to do something quite cool. We're going to flip the terminals of the battery. We're going to flip the terminals of the battery. So I'll just do it very slowly so we can identify what's going on. Uh, so there, let's remove both of them over here, there, there. Right, so from here, now this side is positive, this side is negative. Right, once again, because this terminal is positive, this makes the electrons move away from this terminal onto here, making this terminal with a deficiency of electrons. That's why it's positive. Yes, and by symmetry, this term was negative, it repels all the electrons onto here, that's why it's negative. But now, what does that mean for my circuit? What's going to happen to the circuit? Well, hopefully you can identify that it, before the electron could cross the gap, there was current, because the current's greater than zero here. But now look, there will be a point in which the electrons, it will no longer be able to cross the gap, because it will be repelled by this terminal. So the electron, which is negatively charged, will be repelled by this negative terminal here. Now we can talk about the word stopping potential. The voltage you need across here to do that is called the stopping voltage. So the voltage you need to stop that electron from crossing the gap and reduce the photoelectric current to zero, this is called the stopping voltage. Let's put that down. So there we go. The voltage required to reduce the photoelectric current to zero is known as the stopping voltage. So that is going to be known as the stopping voltage. The voltage you need over here, that is going to be known as a stopping voltage. So obviously there's a certain voltage you need because the electrons, when it pops off, it can cross the gap. You've got to keep increasing this voltage until the, uh, the electron can stop. It will stop moving. It won't be able to travel across and the current will go down to zero. So I will be equal to zero at this point here. So the stopping voltage, I is equal to zero. The current stops flowing around our circuit. Okay, now from here, we're gonna try and link all of this to the equation HF is equal to phi plus EK, where EK is the kinetic energy of the electron. We're gonna link the stopping voltage to this formula here. So I just wanna consider uh, today, if you look at what's inside uh, over here, let's just talk about the electron. So the electron, let's say it's, uh, it's moving across. So the electron moves across over here. Okay, so the electrons moving across, we know in terms of energy, it will have kinetic energy because it's moving. So it will have E kinetic. Good, it will have E kinetic here. But there is obviously something trying to stop it, which is from the voltage from the supply. So the kinetic energy of the electron will be equal to exactly the energy from the supply. The kinetic energy of the electron will be equal to the energy from the supply. Because the electron is emitted, it has kinetic energy, but you're, if you're stopping it, you must have like almost like the opposing energy here. So the kinetic energy of the electron is equal to the energy from the supply. But what is the energy of the supply? How can we link it to the stopping voltage? Hopefully we have an idea that voltage is equal to the energy per unit charge over here. Voltage is equal to energy per unit charge. So therefore, we can put this down. So let's just drop this line over here. So we know that EK is obviously equal to the energy from the supply. But we now know that's going to be the energy from the supply will be equal to the stopping voltage Vs times by Q. So it'll be equal to Vs times by Q over here. There we go. So that's going to be the kinetic energy. So EK is equal to the stopping voltage times by the charge, everyone. And some of you might be asking, well, what is the charge here? What is the charge? The charge is equal to the charge of the thing which is moving, which is the electron charge here. So that's going to be Q, which is going to be 1.6 times by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay, fantastic stuff. 
So therefore, we can then get the final bit. The kinetic energy of the electron is equal to Vse. Fantastic. Right, now we can now replace this part of our equation, the kinetic energy. So therefore, we can do Hf is equal to phi plus, and look, Ek is now replaced by Vse. Vse. Fantastic. So now we have an expression uh, for of the energy of the photon in terms of the work function and now the stopping potential times by the charge of the electron here. Where the charge of the electron is 1.6 times by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and Vs is the stopping potential. Superb. Okay, and some of you might be actually asking me, why would I ever bother to do this? Why would I ever look at the stopping voltage? Well, look, it's basically because by getting Vs and timesing it by the electron charge, you can work out the kinetic energy of the electron, which is really difficult to do otherwise. How else could you work out the kinetic energy of a tiny electron here? But you will actually know the kinetic energy of the electron will be given by the stopping voltage times by the charge of the electron. Easy stuff. Okay, so from here we're going to do a question tying all of this together, so I'll walk you through it. Okay, so question time. The stopping potential when a frequency of 1.6 times by 10 to the power 15 hertz is shown on a metal is 3 volts. Part A. What is the energy transferred by each photon? Oh, okay, so first of all, don't forget what's going on here. You have your metal plate, and obviously the energy of the, the photons come in. So the photon energy comes in, and obviously it hits the metal plate, and the electrons pop off. The electron pops out, so the ultraviolet comes in, and the electron is going to move off it here. Right, so the first question is going to be, what is the energy of the photon? Hopefully you remember that the energy of the photon, energy of the, so this is A, energy of the photon, E photon, will be given by Planck's constant times by F, which is equal to 6.63 times by 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Don't forget, you'll be given that times by the frequency 1.61 times by 10 to the power 15 hertz. Let's see what we get. I'm getting the energy of each photon to be 1.07 times by 10 to the minus 18 joules. That's the energy of each photon which has come out over here. Excellent stuff. Okay, the next one is going to be uh, B, what's going to be the work function of the material? What is the work function of the material? Well, what have we been given? We've got the stopping voltage, so obviously this is going to be Vs. V subscript S is obviously going to be the stopping voltage. This is going to be the frequency, yes, so this is going to be the frequency over here. Um, we can work out uh, the, the work function by using the formula Hf is equal to phi plus Vse where Vs is the stopping voltage and E is the electron charge. So therefore, phi is equal to Hf minus Vse. There we go. So phi will be equal to 6.63 times by 10 to the minus 34 times by the frequency of 1.6 times by 10 to the power 15 minus the stopping voltage, 3 volts, times by the charge of electron, 1.6 times by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs over here. Okay, so therefore phi is equal to, so therefore I'm getting the value of 5.8743 times by 10 to the minus 19 joules over here. Yes, that's going to be my work function, 5.8743 times by 10 to the minus 19 joules. Excellent stuff, so now we've got the work function. And last of all, let's go for part C. What is the maximum speed of the ejected electrons? What is going to be their maximum speed? Well, hopefully you remember that we looked at this earlier on that the kinetic energy over here is equal to the stopping voltage times by the charge, Vs times by the charge of the electron. So therefore, we can just use that. We know that Ek is equal to Vs times by E. And obviously, that's equal to a half times by the mass of the electron times by the velocity squared. So we're going to work at the maximum speed. So obviously, from here, we can rearrange this formula. So therefore, V... Don't forget with this velocity over here, not Vs. And you're going to rearrange this formula to Vse divided by m mass of the electron square rooted. It's going to be the value of the velocity, so therefore it's equal to the square root of 2 times by 3 volts, which is the stopping voltage, it gave it to us over there, times by the charge of the electron, 1.6 times by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, that's the charge of the electron, 
divided by the mass of the electron. The mass of the electron is 9.1 times by 10 to the minus 31 kilograms over here. Don't forget you'll be given the mass of the electron. I forgot to put that down earlier on, but you'll be given that as well. We're getting the value of the velocity to be, I'm guessing the value of the velocity to be 1027105 meters per second. And that's it for another session of Surrazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to get my channel going, and good luck in your academic studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.